At the time of this report, UNC Charlotte's presence on Facebook has more than 32,000 likes. Let's take a look at the evolution of social media at the university and what it means to be connected in the 21st century. In a, at a basic level, social media platforms are a great way to connect with other people. Facebook, which has been huge for us, we're at 32,000 fans now and we've grown exponentially in three years. Welcome to Urban Eden, where you can enjoy garden living in a thriving city. I decided to find out what Twitter was about because I was a little bit intrigued. I use it mainly because I'm very passionate and in my work I do a lot of outreach for science. It's not just for Miley Cyrus and Justin Bieber. This being the first inaugural season, I think that the usage of social media created a lot more school spirit. We realized back in 2008 that we needed to start becoming part of the social media train and hop on that um, and get involved because it was, you know, it was hot. People were starting to use it. Students were engaging with it a ton. We realized we needed to take part in that as well. The media wasn't the media anymore. Like We don't need to just respond to the media. We need to become part of the media and be the media here at the university. Whenever football started um, in August, we obviously shared a lot of football content and our numbers skyrocketed in August. We had 88 posts uh, in August in general, 1,277 comments, 21,000 likes, and over 2,200 shares, which are just amazing numbers. And, you know, it shared football with everyone. It touched, you know, the community on our Facebook, and then it went out, you know, much, much further and got to say to people, hey, UNC Charlotte has a football team now. People are really excited. So we love that. We were able to share a lot of pictures from the game, you know, a lot of video, and just see how much people love Niner Nation and how engaged they are with taking their claim here at UNC Charlotte. I think one of the greatest challenges is the amount of information out there. For example, on Twitter, if we go, you look at the UNCC hashtag, Every day there's hundreds to thousands of people using the UNCC hashtag and trying to you know, sort through all that and find the good content and find the things that we need to respond to where people might have a question or where we can engage with them. Media is all about communicating. It's all about saying something clearly so that people can understand it. Social implies a social connection. And if you think about people who are good at communicating, they're good with words. People who are good at being social are good about making connections and interacting with people. It's all about building community. It's about building professional community. It's about building local community. Um, because once again, you're accessible. If you have a faculty member, a faculty member like Greg Gaber in physics who has a blog called Skulls and the Stars, which is called that because he's an optical scientist He's interested in blogging about optics, but he also has an interest in horror fiction. And that's engagement. That's, you know, getting the community to see, hey, we've got this physics professor who's also editing books on horror fiction, you know, at the university. Hey, who would have known? Except for it's right out there on the web and, you know, somebody saw a link on Twitter. Our chair of political science, Greg Weeks, he has a blog called Two Weeks Notice. The Washington Post pretty regularly calls him. Well, I think a lot of times uh, what happens on both blogs and Twitter is that the things that get the most play are the ones where you are dealing with a very hot current events topic right exactly as it's happening. Um, I'll get you know asked by reporters to talk about Venezuelan elections because Venezuelan elections are happening right at that moment. I write about them, I tweet about them. They're interested in hearing more and so they look at that moment who is really um, touching on this. Same thing with uh, immigration. I do a lot of research on immigration. So those are the ones that for me get the most attention. It's a really good tool for the public to hear what we're doing at UNC Charlotte, but also for the faculty to be able to um, translate it into terms that people can understand and think, oh, okay, that's cool, they're doing that at UNC Charlotte. First of all, I really enjoy using it, which helps, you know, because once, once you do get a following and you feel like people expect you to say interesting things. I tweeted about, you know, um, what my research and interests were in, in astronomy and astrophysics, things that are happening in the sky, you know, meteor showers, um, launches, anything to do with astronomy and space, primarily for science outreach. Getting into college is probably one of the most useful tools I had. Um, I think kind of Twitter was sort of the Robin to the Batman of Facebook. Um, it was the, the, way, the place that I kind of went to, to have fun with social media. So uh, I'm significantly guilty of ego tweeting um, or essentially 
tweeting things to make myself look great. I think the UNCC Twitter page and the Facebook page, they really try to engage students and try to ask a lot of questions, post a lot of updates, and I think it's really beneficial. Definitely builds a community and strengthens the university community. If you're an alumni or if you're someone who's not actively on campus all the time, then the Facebook page is a perfect way for you to stay connected to the football event and to Botany Cones, uh, the Cone Center's 50th anniversary or you know, the International Festival or whatever the case may be. It's a perfect place to go to because it sort of aggregates all of the different little activities and events that are happening on campus that we see and experience firsthand every day in such a way that anyone can come in, whether you've been away from the university for 20 years or for five, and see in a nutshell what's going on.